depois de vários episódios do Convite 19, a gente resolveu fazer um especial conversando com o produtor audiovisual norte-americano, também educador e autor de vários livros, o Howard Blumenthal. A conversa de hoje vai ser sobre o futuro da educação, currículo, metodologia, formas de aprender e de ensinar, muita, muita coisa legal. Eu acho que vocês vão gostar muito. I know that you have a huge experience with communication, education, technology, and you were really aware of the intersection of this media learning and everything. What, what, what are you learning right now during this pandemic? What do you think we should be focusing on, you know, in order to have a better education for our children? I think the really good news about this is we're all becoming much more connected throughout the world. Kids know where Wuhan, China is now. Parents have heard of that. That never happened before. And as we talk about Italy and Spain and the long list of other places, I think that the nationalism movement that's taken hold in a lot of different countries in the world um, weakens because there's so much information available to so many more people about what's happening in different parts of the world. And we really have a sense that we all have many of the same issues. Um, the schools worldwide were somehow prepared to teach, you know, like long distance uh, teaching and using like technology to improve uh, the learning process. Or it was just like a big surprise that, you know, caught everybody out of guard. Well, what do you um, think about it? School has never been a perfect idea. It's also not that old an idea. And we should remember that a hundred years ago, there were still a lot of questions about whether or not people belonged in public schools and whether public schools would be an idea that would remain. It was a little earlier in England and Germany, other places later in others, but the idea that every kid has a right to education and that they would all spend the majority of their time, not on the farm, not in the family business, cottage industry, whatever it might be, not on the factory floor, but instead in a public school. Huge change in the way we think about everything. Everybody's different. And when you introduce the internet and mobile devices and the ability and encouragement to learn on your own, school becomes one of several tools. It doesn't end up being the tool. And I think what we've all learned through this pandemic is if you're going to build a life, you have to rely upon more than school and more than your parents for instruction. That first kid will teach the other kids. And for me, that's the way learning works. It spreads like a virus. Um, it spreads because people are interested and curious and because they have contact with one another. And I mean, look at the number of people who, who now can play with an iMac and connect and now we're going to record some sort of a, a show that we're making up from our houses and here we are we're going to video edit it all of a sudden everybody knows how to do this this used to be a very specialized set of skills requiring very expensive equipment now it's widely available and we don't even think twice about it and we we cross national lines to do it the tools are available now We've never had this before in the history of the world. Don't you think that changed the whole way teachers are used to teach? You know, because I'm talking more about Brazilian experience right now. Uh, normally, we see the education as um, a process where one knows more and therefore is able to teach, you know, like a big group of kids or teenagers, whatever. And, and you have this very conservative or formal way to educate, normally without any technological tool, just, just you know, like the conversation and the hands-on, the presence, the, the, you know, like all the um, uh, contact, the physical contact that you can have in a, in a school. And now they're being invited, you know, by the pandemic to rethink the way they teach. You know, they have now a, an, an interface and they have to deal with kids that are far away in their houses, with the parents dealing with home office, you know, like with the limited access to content, because in Brazil, I don't know if that compares to the US, but in Brazil, it's very unequal. You know, like you can have even middle-class kids 
not having one computer per person. So like they, in order to have like an online class, they, the father or the mother has to stop working for that particular time and let the kid, you know, like uh, study. And then for homework and everything else, it's a challenge. It's a big challenge that I've, I've been talking about this with my colleagues, with teachers, with students. And it's a big, big challenge and almost to the point that kids are rejecting the school because they're thinking like, it's too annoying, it's too, it's exhaustive and I'm not really learning. And besides, depending on the, the, the age of the kid, like my daughter, for example, she's nine, she can't sit still for more than one hour. She wants to jump, she wants to touch, she wants to, you know, like uh, do other things. So it's like, uh, theoretically, I believe that there's a lot to be learned, a lot to be, you know, explored. But in practice, I think it, it, we still have to find a way to do it. What, what, what do you think about it? Is this similar in US or uh, what are your perceptions on this subject? We've turned our homes into schools and into factories and into technology centers and all of those things, right? But it's not, when you go back into the history, and I, I really grab onto the history often, um, Kids have been learning at home forever. Um, we, we've invented this crazy idea that school and learning are sort of synonymous. And they're not. I think that for most kids, they want to learn the basic skills. They have a great deal of respect for teachers. Their respect for technology is far lower than the adults have have conceived. I think that it's really about having a good teacher and the social interaction and the desire to learn the basic skills. And those basic skills could go all the way through high school, but as kids go beyond third or fourth grade, they become interested in their own things. And school is not set up to provide that kind of education. So kids have figured out, I can get this elsewhere. So if you're interested in trees, go take a walk in the woods. You don't have to be sitting in school asking questions because the information is available to you. If you're interested in, um, well, now we're, we've got this gigantic thing happening with Black history and, uh, you know, and, and, and now Amazon's type, top selling books are, are all about race. Um, if a kid wants to learn about that, the best source of that probably isn't the teacher because the teacher was never educated in that space either. And it's relatively easy for the kid to be able to learn on their own or learn from one another or gather other resources or watch movies because movies end up being a big source. So it's a different way of thinking about what school ought to be. I think school is a wonderful invention. The main thing I like about school is it exists in every single local community and it is staffed by people who care about kids. So what do you think it should be taught in schools in order to make us better, uh, you know, citizens of the planet or to understand ourselves better? The learning on your own part is actually really important. It's amazing what kids are capable of doing. And I think we're just beginning to realize that we've really underestimated them. And I think this whole idea of, well, I'm a parent and I have to take care of my kid all the time. No, you need to be on the premises. Let the kid learn on his or her own or her own and encourage interaction between them. And we've got the beginning of something. Use books. Books are really good. Lots and lots of books. School on a local level is managed and funded by very large state and federal uh, in, national institutions. And because they control the money, they also control the curriculum. So the problem is not in the school level or the education level, it's in the way we manage it and govern it. That's a much more difficult thing because often the people who are in charge of that don't spend a lot of time in classrooms and don't spend a lot of time with kids. And there are lots of research reports. There's, and because they're not directly involved, it's very difficult for them to make intelligent decisions and they're in the middle of a political situation. What is the potential of audiovisual for education in especially you that uh, work so hard in this field? What, what we can learn from these tools? 
So now the tool that's available to me is also available even on a subscription basis for a month or two, right, to a nine-year-old. But the nine-year-old has a big advantage. They have the time that I don't to be able to sit and watch every tutorial. So it's not unusual for a 10-year-old to show me how to do something. Now, it used to be that as a professional, you would have certain expectations. We've thrown a lot of those expectations out the window because none of us really can deal with all of these different technologies. So school provides a really important adult supervised, but a little bit more gentle. But the idea of pouring content into people's heads, I think we like to do that on our own as, you, as your daughter is, is finding. And the idea of collaborating in that is a great way to learn because you not only learn from other people, you learn how really bad you are at some things. And that's okay, because not everybody's great at everything, right? If you, if you can say something specific for the Brazilian audience, what, what would you tell us, you know, like to, um, to deal with this pandemic, to focus on education, what would be the message? I know we all want to be looking at national leadership, uh, for all sorts of things. It really is about the family, the kids, the home, the neighborhood, the community. It always has been. We tend to forget that. I think that you see more of that maybe in a gated, a walled apartment complex or in a favela than you do in other places because the people need one another. They look out for one another. They look out for one another's kids. So it's really all about how you as a kid or you as a parent or you as a teacher focuses, if you focus too far up, very quickly you realize the resources just aren't there. The people don't know what they're doing. The, the uncertainty is too high. The politics is too crazy. Um, and this is for Brazil, but it's also for many other countries. It really is about parents are responsible for their children and children are responsible for their own well-being nothing has ever changed. You gotta be able to do it on your own. Se você fosse um formulador de políticas públicas para educação, o que seria essencial na sua escola? O que seria imprescindível para que crianças e jovens aprendessem e se tornassem cidadãos cada vez mais capazes de trafegar pelos desafios do século 21? Boa pergunta. <risos>